Well, it is welcome to the Andrew Uni Stadium for National Trophy action as the White Warriors take on the Swindon Sprockets. The Sprockets, of course, are made up from various riders from other teams, but come here with a pretty potent looking line up with uh, Zach Vachanek riding at number one, Dan Greenwood at three, Daryl Richards at five. They really are a little bit on the top heavy side, but as are the White Warriors with Ben Wilson at one, James Cockle, the skipper at three, and Nathan Greaves at four. Fifteen heats of action in front of us tonight. It's a bit of a cool evening here on the island, but we're hoping the action on the track is going to be pretty hot. The uh, referee, Jim McGregor, currently on a southern tour. He will be at uh, Eastbourne on Saturday night uh, doing the uh, National Trophy match between the Eagles and Mildon Hall. But here tonight, he's in charge of these two teams. Lee Kilby in charge of the Robins and Martin Whitman takes over from Jackie Batcher in charge of the White Warriors here tonight. So which way will it go? Well, we're currently uh, just having a quick look around the pits here. But uh, very shortly we will join Andy Hay to speak in with one or two of the people who hope to make it all happen tonight. So let's go find Andy down in the pits. On the island with promoter Barry Bishop. Barry, the Warriors are out tonight against the Sprockets. Can't wait for this one. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this one. It's going to be uh, a good meeting. Um, I'm not 100% sure regards the principles of everything of having Swindon in the league, but I guess uh, for the trophy. Um, but it will be an ideal opportunity for them to understand what National League is all about if they plan to, to go through with it next year um, and join the league if there's space for them. Uh, but I'm also really pleased to have our squad back now at full strength. It's great to have Tyler and Ricky both back here uh, so that we can get a proper look at them and not having to keep using uh, a rider replacement or, um, or a number eight. So hopefully we'll get to see them all tonight uh, in, in full swing and uh, uh, we can, um, uh, what's the right words I'm looking for? Uh, we can win. We can, well, we can win, but we can uh, look at how we think we're going to fare further in the season. Now, just touching on that subject about the guys coming back in, for those uh, Warrior fans at home, how difficult is it to find those reserves to come in and cover for the guys when they're out? Uh, it's quite difficult because we can't have a, a rider replacement for them or a guest. We have to use a rider replacement facility. And so that would leave us, um, uh, certainly in the case of Tyler, with only Chris and two reserves and a number eight who could fill his, his races. And... Then it also extends the amount of rides that uh, any one rider has to have. So, for example, Jamie's have seven rides every meeting that he's been in so far for us, um, which is pretty tiring at any track. Uh, here, it's really tiring. So, um, and that when it comes to finding a replacement if, uh, uh, for looking through the reserves, uh, the, the situation at the moment is very difficult. There aren't really that many reserves around that are ready to come into this league. Um, this league pretty much thrives on a good set of reserves that makes such a difference to the team um, and that's the difference between it winning and losing uh, whether you agree with that or not that's how we are at the moment uh, for this league hopefully we can look at making it more difficult to uh, to prevent teams from just finding two great reserves and then winning every meeting uh, uh, but we'll see uh, and hopefully we can uh, find someone if the situation came along uh, that we needed to change the reserve um, or if anyone you know god forbid were to get hurt okay now we do do realize that a lot of people get to see on social media just how busy you are uh, and, and the other guys of the staff during the week but can you just explain to us what what time warrior duties start on race day and what happens for your perspective on race day what time does it all start for you uh, for me i start about five o'clock uh, or half past five with telephone calls up to Thailand. I work in Thailand uh, uh, quite a lot and um, so I have to work Thai and German hours which is good for me here uh, because it frees me up in the afternoons. And then typically I look at the track around seven o'clock um, and just to see what I think we need for that day. Uh, we will have soaked it the night before as we did last night. We were working on the track until half past nine. Um, and then normally the track staff arrive at half past nine. We have a cup of tea, or they have a cup of tea because I'm not there at that point. And then um, uh, they start to inflate the airbags, wash down the airbags, 
uh, ensure that the track is wet. Uh, if it isn't, they'll add more water to it. And um, uh, we look at the amount of shale on the track, uh, if we need to respike it or anything like that. Uh, then throughout the day, it's a case of adding more water, making sure everywhere's ship shape, that everywhere's tidy so that we can welcome our, our fans and away fans. Uh, uh, even through to things like today, we, we found out unfortunately Chris Popper was poorly, although I, actually I knew yesterday, um, but things like that you have to change. So um, there's lots going on on race day. I'm extremely grateful for everybody that helps us. Uh, we can't do it without them uh, and it's a, you know, a non-stop project. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a day in the life of promoter Barry Bishop. I could tell you my week one day if you want, my weeks are equally as hectic. This week we had my first school on, my first skid on Tuesday, uh, which then meant, of course, we had to bring the track back in on Wednesday before we could water it. Um, uh, so it's non-stop. I've got to ask you before you go on that my first skid, we saw the, the pictures of the, of the kids doing their warm-up warm -up, um, <laughs> exercises. It is just awesome the way that that's taken off with all the kids getting involved, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, my first kids become really popular now and uh, we have a core following. It's quite interesting. We had 24 students last night and only three of them were new. Um, 17 were from the island uh, and 16 were under 16. So we're really proud of my first kid. It's, it's growing and growing and um, it becomes a bigger success every week. Now, actually, our sponsors' children are getting involved and grandchildren. So it all bodes well for... Um, a successful long-term future. Uh, Jamie Seeley, of course, came through my first skid, um, which is great, and uh, we try to include them, uh, the, the riders, whenever we can. So, for example, I think we're going to shake the mould up a little bit tonight, and we've got two female riders who come to my first skid coming out as part of the show. Awesome. Well, have a great night. We know how hard you guys work, so... Uh... We'll have a chat at the end of the night, no doubt, and we'll uh, hopefully come away with a win tonight. Let's hope so. And good entertainment. Thanks a lot. Cheers now. Lee, what's it like for the Sprockets to be back again? Uh, yeah, terrific. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for us. I mean, we've, I think we've wanted to do this for a couple of years, hence the reason that we did the, um, the, the one-off challenge match last year. So to get the boys back on track, and yes, we're a select side. Uh, we know that, that's the position we're in, but the other promoters have been superb. They've let us use their riders, and we've put together a very good team, and it, it means a lot to the people of Swindon as well. We've got a good history with the Sprockets. So you guys are, are kind of testing the water, if you like, for next season, would you say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's where we're at. I mean, the, the remit for me is to, to do these four meetings. Hopefully it's six, you know, that would be nice if we can finish top and go through. But try and get a bit of success, get a good crowd at Swindon, get a bit of a following behind it, and, and if it does look after itself, you know, next season in a new stadium at the Abbey or in a new one, we could have a, we could have a full-size National League team. That's, that's, my, that's my drive, really. That's the goal. Yeah, absolutely. OK, now just looking at the side you've assembled tonight, really powerful side there. Um, was it uh, a challenge to put those seven riders together? Yes and no. I think I think the response I had from all the guys that I asked was positive. So in that respect, it was easy because everybody wants track time. And I think a lot of people saw it as a nice opportunity to represent Swindon, you know, as well as Lakeside and the other teams they race for. Um, so I would say, you know, we obviously had a change with David Mason. It was sad to lose David. He's a, he's a great lad. He would have captained the team brilliantly. But Alfie coming in was straight away wanting to ride for us. So in the Premiership and also looking for National League next year, hopefully in the new stadium? In the new stadium, that's the drive. There's obviously been delays which have been well publicised, but the, the stadium are working on that now with the local council. Um, and that's, that's the drive now. We hope to be into that new stadium next year. That's the plan. But the Abbey is there. It's a beautiful old stadium. It's still doing us proud. It's a terrific track. So if we remain there for another season, so be it. But, but the, the conversation is positive at the minute. Excellent. Uh, now going into tonight's match, obviously, this is kind of the beginning of the season still. Uh, the Warriors at full strength tonight. So. Uh, how do you think it's going to look? It's, it's good. We, I, I looked at the other sides in the competition and built our side around what the others had done, really. I took a, a bit of influence on the way that they'd set the sides up. So I think we're very well matched. I think we, we've both got a good, strong heat leader trio. Um, and then, obviously, the, the difference is, is what the boys do down the order. But, but in Lane and in Taylor, we've got two young lads that are really keen to, to, to crack on and to, to make a difference. So, you know, I'm hoping that they might be uh, the difference for us tonight. Well, either which way, it's a fantastic track here. It's fast. It's, a th it's an exit to throw back in my eyes. As soon as I looked at it, I thought that looks like Exeter used to look. Big long straights, fast track. It's good. It's no good. steel fence though. No steel fence to hit, no, which is a joy. Anyway, enjoy your evening on the island. Thank um, you very much. All the riders, we hope, stay safe. They all ride fast and uh, hopefully put on a good, good entertainment for the crowd tonight. Good show, no injuries. Happy, some good entertainment. That's what we want. We'll speak to you after the meeting. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you.
Well, our thanks to everyone concerned there, who's uh, Andy Hay, uh, finding out who's doing what around the pit. So let's take a look at the two lineups before we go down for the official introductions. We'll start with uh, the Sprockets of Swindon. It is Zach Vachanek there at number one. David Vallinger is at number two. Dan Greenwood at number three. At number four, Alfie Botel. Daryl Richings rides at number five, Lane Kupik at number six, and Taylor Hampshire at number seven. Team manager Lee Kilby, famous name that down Swindon Way. So we'll take a look then at the home side. Ben Wilson rides at number one. Tyler Govier is at two. James Cockle, the skipper, rides at number three. Chris Whitman there at number four. Nathan Greaves rides at number five. James Seeley at six. Ricky Mullins at seven. And the manager for the White Warriors today is Martin Whitman. So here we go then. The riders on the circuit for heat number one. And riding in the red helmet there, it is Ben Wilson. Wilson's partner in blue, Tyler Govia. Uh, Govia had a fall earlier in the season, injured his arm, was out of action. For the Vistas, Jack Fachanek rides in the white helmet. David Wallinger is the rider in yellow. Starting Marshall calling them into place. Once they settle down, we can get underway with the action. Here we go. Stanley Marshall walks away. The green light is on heat number one, and away they go. The charge for the first turn. Good start there for Wachanek there in the white helmet. Jovi has gone down at the back there. He's on the circuit at the moment. Is he going to get up? Remember, he's recovering from an injury. He's up, and he's getting that machine off the circuit as the race continues. It is Jack Wachanek out in the white helmet out in front. Ben Wilson in second place. Well into there in third place Wilson trying the swoop around the outside the dust beginning to fly very early in this meeting here let's go around the bottom turn Ratchinek is leading the way still in second place Ben Wilson is Wilson going to make any ground up in this one it doesn't look like he is the youngster looking very very fast he's down the back straight Wilson though keeping him honest there in second place Wallinger in third place and the sprockets are looking pretty good here in this opening heat. We uh, saw the Birmingham here last year who Ratchinek was riding for. And he picked up an injury towards the end of the season. But he certainly recovered from that well. He's won that one very comfortably there in heat number one. Second place goes to Ben Wilson. Third place David Wellinger there. It's a two points to the Warriors it's four to the Sprockets let's have a look at the start here again as we go into the turn there is Govia gets into trouble at the back and down he goes and uh, that was the end of his race let's hope he's okay but it's a four two to the Sprockets in the opening race the riders then on the circuit for heat number two and it's uh, Jamie Seeley for the Warriors in the red helmet. Rick Mullins is in blue. Lane Cooper was a Warrior last year. He's in the white helmet. Taylor Hampshire is in yellow and black. We're waiting patiently for them to settle down here. Starting Marshall working overtime very early on in this meeting, getting them into place. So here we go then, the bikes are revving away, the green line is on, the tapes rise and away they go. And the charge for the first turn and look at this here, it's a rider in yellow. Taylor Hampshire has made a super start there. Hampshire in front, Mullins in second place at the moment as you go into the bottom turn, diving up the inside of Mullins. It is Cupid in the white helmet, goes through to second place, Sealy tailed off at the back. But the Sprockets on a 5-1 here in heat number two and what a start for the visitors. Hampshire is leading the way, looked very, very fast, really flew away from the start. Keep it there in second place, still in third place, it is Mullins. And a 5-1 here to the Sprockets would put them six points in front very early on. And it looks like it could be another very tough meeting for the Warriors here tonight. So the visitors well in front here in this second race. And a 5-1 here, as we said, is going to give them a comfortable lead very early on. And if 
and Warriors are to get back into this match they are going to have to do something pretty special very very dusty already here on the island but no problems for Taylor Hampshire who's got daylight in front of him he wins heat number two second place goes to Lane Coopit and third place there to Ricky Mullins it's one to the Warriors it's five to the Sprockets and the scores after two heats are three points to the Isle of Wight nine points to Swindon Swindon's first match together of the season and what a start they have made here the Wiltshire Club well in front so the riders on the circuit then for heat number three and it's James Cockle the skipper riding in the red helmet his partner in blue Chris Whitman Dan Greenwood rides in the white helmet we've seen him here before and Alfie Botow replacing David Mason in the yellow helmet it's a signal to the riders time to come to the line get ready to race come on boy settle down now so here we go then in the blue helmet off the inside gate Chris Whitman James Cockle there on gate number three Botel on the outside Greenwood pass from the starts normally but he's missed it there and as they're going to the first turn where well, the red lights have come on so an unsatisfactory start there the race has been stopped Cockle who got away there very very sprightly he's got to have to do it all over again so it's going to be required for the uh, Warriors to make another very fast start Rider in white Greenwood being told to move over here so here we go then for the retake of heat number three green lights on away they go and Botow again has made a sensational start there Alfie Botow in front second place James Cockle third place Chris Whitman but the back is Dan Greenwood here comes Cockle trying to get up the inside of Botow who goes right up the bank and around the outside of the Warriors skipper come into this first and second turn Alfie Botow in front and this time Cockle tries the inside swoop the boat tail certainly got the speed if Cockle's going to pass him he's going to have to go the long way round you feel and I think he realises that and he's moving up the bank in here but boat tail is looking fast Cockle chasing hard in second place still Whitman in third place at the back it is Dan Greenwood who missed the start again here to go into the bottom turn Cockle trying inside swoop on boat tail here pushing him very very hard but the youngster, the former Rye House rider and Milton Hall rider is hanging on to second place. Still Cockle, the last experienced rider for the Warriors in second place. Whitman has got third place booked up here. Cockle goes up the bank and he's going to try the big blast around the outside. But Botel having none of it. He's going to win heat number three. And there he goes over the line. Two points go to Cockle. One point goes to Whitman. Better race there for the Warriors it's a split heat three points apiece there's a scores on the doors the Warriors have six still Swindon though six points in front they have 12 so here we go then for heat number four Nathan Greaves rides in red Ricky Mullins his partner in blue Daryl Richens is the rider in white Taylor Hampshire was a super winner first time out he's the rider in yellow Mullins picked up one point first time out. Hampshire, as we say, one heat number two. Starting Marshall calling them into place to get this race underway. Full fold 15. Green lights on away. They go. Charge for the first turn here, and it's Richins on the outside. It's Greaves on the inside. Greaves is trying to move him over and close the door. To go down the back straight. It is Richins, but it is Greaves who's gone up the inside of him. Good right there from Greaves to take over pole position Richens in second place Hampshire way back in third place but even further back it is Mullins at the back here but Nathan Greaves is looking like he's going to be the Warriors first race winner of the night he's out in front comes into this first and second turn on this big fast pacing racing Andrew Uni Stadium racetrack here just outside right on the Isle of Wight there's Richens in second place third place at the moment it is Hampshire so damage limitations here for the Sprockets it's, uh, Greaves doesn't look back he just keeps it wound on he's got a good lead here over Richens comes around the bottom turn for the final time heads for the chequered flag and victory 
for the Warriors. Second place it is Richin, third place Hampshire. So after turn number two, that was how they panned out. It's how they finish. Three points to the Warriors, three to the Sprockets. Scores on the doors there are the Isle of Wight on nine. Swindon still holding that six point lead. They have 15. So move straight on to heat number five and riding in the red helmet, James Cockle. He had a second place first time out. Chris Whitman is in the blue helmet. He had a third place first time out in white. Jack Vachanek is the rider in the white helmet. He was a winner of heat number one. And David Wallinger, Wallinger is the rider in the yellow helmet. He goes off the inside gate. He picked up one point first time out. Here we go then, heat number five. Jim McGregor, the uh, referee, flashing the green lights there. He wants the riders at the line ready to race. So here we go then. And away they go in the charge for the first turn. Oh, it's Cockle who's got away this time. Cockle is in front. Coming round the outside, it is Whitman in two second place. David Wallinger is in third place at the back. It's Zach Fratchenek. But Whitman's gone wide there. But he's still hanging on to third place. Wallinger in second place. Cockle out in front. And this is a little bit more like it. And the riders going very, very wide there. As uh, Wallinger shuts the door on Whitman. And that has allowed Fratchenek to come up the inside here. Cockle still out in front. Lady Wallinger there in second place, Zach Pachanek there in third place. And at the back it is Chris Whitman. Go around the bottom turn here and Cockle looking like he's got this one in the bag. As we said it there, Zach comes through into second place here and he set his sights on the rear wheel here of James Cockle. He's got him in sight problems there for Wallinger who has stopped but the race is up front. It is Cockle coming under all sorts of pressure here as the young gun comes up the inside of him and they, Zach Vachanek there goes right through on the line and snatch victory from the jaws of defeat in dramatic style. Wow. What looked like a 5-1 to the Warriors ended up being a 3-3. So here we go then, the riders on the circuit already for heat number six. Ben Wilson rides in red. Well, Tyler Govia, we understand, has been pulled out of the meeting on medical grounds. We did see him crash in the opening heat, so reserve Ricky Mullins comes into his place here in blue. Daryl Richens is in white, and Lane Cooper is the rider in the yellow helmet. So Cooper on the outside, Richens out on two, Wilson on gate number one, second place for him, first time out. And um, Ricky Mullins pressure on him in the blue helmet. So here we go, and away they go, and a charge for the first turn, and Ben Wilson's made a super start there. Wilson it is in front, Richens in second place. Third place is Cooper at the back, it is Mullins. Going round the bottom turn here, and look at this out, in front, Ben Wilson. Leading the way for the Warriors, but still the Sprockets packing in those minor positions. And that is what could or couldn't win you a match at the end of the day. Richens trying to get up the inside of Wilson, but the experienced Yorkshireman out in front. It's round the first and second turn here. Packed very, very dry and dusty. Threat of rain probably prepared will help the way the track was prepared here but we haven't had any rain Ben Wilson won't mind he's got clear clear daylight out in front goes round that first and second turn screwing it on looks back over his shoulder he knows he's got this one in the bag Richin's still there in second place third place will be Cupid so it's going to be a split heat there is Wilson going over the line for three two points go to Richin's one point goes to Cupid it's another split heat, three points to the Warriors, three to the Sprockets, 15 points to the Isle of Wight, 21 to Swindon. Shake of the hands there from Richens and Wilson. And another heat advantage, or heat winner for the Warriors. Moving on to heat number seven.
And riding in red it is Nathan Greaves, winner, first time out. James Seely is the rider in blue, yet to open his account. In white, Dan Greenwood. Well, he didn't score in his opening race. And in yellow, it is Alfie Botel. He was a super winner first time out from the outside. What can he do here off of gate number three? So if Greenwoods and Botel can pop out the start, could be a tough night here for Nathan Greaves. But Greaves is a super winner first time out. So here we go then. Green light is on. And away they go. And Botel has popped out the start. But here comes Greaves up the inside of him early on. Moving him off the line. It is Greaves who's gone in front. Into the bottom turn. Botel trying to get back up the inside of him. Let's go around the bottom turn there. Botel locked up slightly now. It's allowed Greaves to open up a bit of a lead. Come round this first and second turn. James Greaves win a first time out. Out in front here in heat number seven. Greenwood is in third place at the moment. At the back it is James Seeley. So we are looking. Oh, problems there for Botel who's dropped it on the top turn. He's quickly back up on his machine. The points are going to slip away there. Better news for the Warriors. Because there is Seeley in third place. Second place at the moment. It is Dan Greenwood out in front. It is Greens. He's surely going to get his second win of the night. Look at the lead he's got here. Goes down the back straight. He's almost a whole straight in front of Greenwood. And Greaves it is heading for the checker black right to all Wolverhampton in the top flight as well. He's won that one. His second race win of the night. Second place goes to Greenwood. Third place there goes to Seely Big Botel at the back having fallen when in second place. So it's a 4-2 to the Warriors. The uh, deficit is reduced to four points. 19 points to the Isla White. 23 to Swindon we get ready for heat number eight as we approach the halfway stage of this national trophy competition replacing Tyler Govia in the red helmet James Seeley in blue Ricky Mullins in white David Wallinger and in yellow it is Taylor Hampshire so here we go then at 19 points to 23 this is heat number eight and away they go oh look at this here it is David Wallinger made a super fast start. He's gone in front and Hampshire has joined him in second place. And Swindon are on a 5-1. Seeley in third place. Mullins at the back here. And this is not what the home fans would have wanted. But on previous form in this meeting, it's probably what they were expecting. There's Hampshire in second place. The young man who we've seen a few times looking very, very promising. Is round the bottom turn, but it is Wallinger out in front here, and he's looking apart as well. They've got a sizable lead and around this first and second turn. And if it stays like this, it will surely be a big 5 1 to the visitors, and that will give them an eight point cushion. And how vital could that be at the end of the day? Problems there for Seeley, who goes awfully wide, almost come down. Wallinger's going to win this one by the proverbial mile. And uh, he does just that. And Taylor Hampshire, who rides for Kingsland, also in this league, takes second place. And, uh, uh, Wallinger, not a youngster at uh, 33 years old, but had things very, very easy in that one, right for the Stoke Potters. So here we go then, heat number nine. James Cockle rides in red. His partner in blue, Chris Whitman. In white, Daryl Richens. So far, Richens on four points. Lane Cooper is the rider in yellow. He's on three, paid five. Cockle at the moment is on four. Got picked right on the line. Back there in an exciting heat number five. What can he do in this one here? Here we go then, green lights on and away they go and a charge for the first turn, it's Whitman who's got away here this time, Cockle on the outside and Richens comes through on the inside here to take over the lead. 
into the bottom turn, Richens on the inside, Cockle in second place, Whitman in third place, the dust beginning to fly again here, and Richens just opens it up and he is flying, keeping at the back here, but it's all about Richens in this one, down the back straight into the bottom turn, and uh, looking very, very comfy. Road for the Islanders last year, of course. So, uh, hand picked here for the Sprockets and doing a good job. Pressure at the back here for Whitman from Cupid, but it doesn't look like he's going to find a way through here. The riders quite well spread out. If there is going to be any passing, it will be at the back because Richens is not going to be caught. He's a mile clear. Goes down the back straight into the final two turns. There is Cockle in second place. There's Whitman in third. So we're looking at a split heat here, three points apiece. And that is how it finishes. It's a win for Rich in second place, Cockle. Third place goes to Whitman, three to the Warriors, three to the Sprockets, 23 to the Isle of Wight, 31 to Swindon time running out for the home side if they are to register their first win of the season heat number 10 because they've got ben wilson riding in red but no tyler govia in his place is well should have been ricky mullins now mullins has been excluded for not being ready to race under the two minutes and james seeley is replacing mullins so greenwood in white botel in yellow and away they go, and Botel again makes a fast start, but so does Wilson from the outside. It is Wilson in from Botel there in second place. Third place at the moment in white, it is Dan Greenwood. Chesterfield born rider. Former under 15 champion back in 2007 back in third place at the moment Botel is in second place but out in front it is Ben Wilson but with Seely at the back again we are only going to get a split heat around that first and second turn still very very dry very very dusty very very bumpy but look at the distance between first and second not the most exciting speedway you will see the riders could only beat what's in front of them and Ben Wilson is tearing them apart. Still Botel in second place, Greenwood there in third place. But it is Ben Wilson who hits for the checker flag and over the line he goes for three. Second place goes to Green, well to Botel rather, third place to Greenwood, three to the Ray. <laughs> three to the Warriors and three to the Sprockets. The scores on the doors 26 to the Isle of Wight, 34 to Swindon. So here we go, then we move on then to heat number 11 in red. It's the unbeaten Nathan Greaves, two wins out of two. And uh, Ricky Mullins gets a reserve ride replacing James Seeding. We saw him just now in blue. Zach Vachanek unbeaten, two wins out of two. He's in white. David Wallinger is the rider in yellow. Greaves two wins out of two to his name. Something's got to give in this one here. Seeley and Wallinger making up the quartet. Here we go. And away they go and a charge for the first turn. And look at this here. And it's Greaves on the inside who's got away. Greaves and is leading the way. Wallinger trying around the outside. Machinek up the inside going to the bottom turn. But it is Nathan Greaves. Already with two wins out of two, out in front. David Wellinger there in second place, chasing hard. Again, the Sprockets in the minor positions here, with uh, Mullins tailed off at the back. Around the bottom turn, and Wellinger goes up the bank, and Wachanek will go through to take up the challenge, just as he did back in heat number five. Now, has he got enough here to catch Nathan Greaves? Greaves is looking fast. Well, spluttered in his first two meetings, but he's certainly got it right tonight. He's round that first and second turn. Surely he's not going to be caught here. There's Wackenhead in second place. Third place at the moment, it is Wallinger. 
go round the bottom turn so the rider in red Nathan Greaves is going for a hat trick of wins and there he goes over the line second place goes to Ratchanek third place there goes to Wallinger it's three to the Warriors three points to the Sprockets scores on the doors Isla White on 29 points Swindon on 37 46 remember will be enough for a victory there's no black and white helmets allowed at this level as we take an interval break we have a quick look around the pits here and, uh, well, riders dusting himself down a bit here and Kevin Shepherd this young Zach who's looked uh, pretty special so far beaten just once Lane Cupid so let's move on then the interval's over we go on to heat number 12 and riding in red James Cockle yet to record a victory in blue it looks like it is Ricky Mullins who is replacing Seeley here in fact I've got a feeling it may be the other way around it is indeed it is Seeley replacing Mullins in the white helmet Dan Greenwood and in yellow it is Lane Cooper that's how they line up then certainly uh, Tyler Gobia out injured has uh, not helped their cause here we go then and away they go charge for the first turn and it's Cockrell's made a superstar Cockrell is in front well it was Senior who's got out into second place briefly both the sprockets flying past him before they got to the first turn but Cockrell is in front here and he's already built up a sizable lead second place at the moment it is Dan Greenwood Greenwood chasing hard in second place third place at the moment in yellow it is Cupid so we are again looking at a split heat and this will suit Swindon races running out the Warriors are up against it at the moment a rather dry and dusty Andrew Uni Stadium James Cockle out in front he looks like he's going to get his first race winner of the evening in this one still in second place Greenwood third place it is Kirpik not too much to report on that one it doesn't look like there's going to be any change as Cockle goes down the back straight into the bottom turn and heads for his first race win of the evening and there he cruises over the line the home fans like that one second place goes to Greenwood third place to Kirpik three points to the Warriors three points to the Sprockets 32 to 40 we've got just three races remaining and Swindon really are in the driving seat in this national trophy encounter heat number 13 and what a lineup we have here for this one we've got Ben Wilson riding in red Nathan Greaves three wins out of three he's in blue in the white helmet two wins and a second Zach Vachanek and in yellow Daryl Richens he was a winner last time out he's got seven points out of nine this really is the big hitters Vachanek ready to go on the inside next to him Ben Wilson he's only dropped one point Nathan Reeves hasn't dropped any Richens has only dropped two as well and away they go in the charge for the first turn Oh, and it's Greaves from the outside. It's made a superstar. Wilson has gone with him there in second place. Wachanek in third place. Coming around the outside, it is Richens. Richens going right up the bank in here. Chasing after the Warriors pairing. And it is Greaves and Wilson, one and two. Here comes Richens here. Going right out wide. They're getting filled in with dust as they go down the back straight. Into the bottom turn. Greaves leading the way here Wilson tucked in behind him in second place got to be careful there he doesn't get caught and Greaves looks over his shoulder he knows now it's his part behind him here go off into the fence there goes Daryl Richens he got a little bit too close there he wound it on and he used up and he's not going to get that bike up from under the fence that's for sure the red lights are on I'm sure Jim McGregor will award that one we we'll wait and see to get his verdict certainly the Warriors were on a 5-1 let's have a look at it here here comes Richings 
and he gets out in the loose stuff and there he goes and he hits the air fence good job it was an air fence does very well to get himself up and we can tell you the race has been awarded so it's a win there for Nathan Greaves second place goes to Ben Wilson third place Zach Vachanek he's done there Chris Whitman is in the red helmet here in heat number 14 Ricky Mullins replaces James Seeley in the blue helmet in the white helmet it is Alfie Botel so far Alfie has uh, been pretty good he's had a win a last and a second and in yellow Taylor Hampshire he's looked pretty good as well so far he's on six paid eight out of a possible nine so a tough one here for Whitman who so far picked up three third places so here we go then Mullins on that inside gate gate number one Botel there on gate number two Whitman on gate number three Hampshire on the outside gate gate number four and away they go and Botel and it's has made a super start Botel and is leading the way here Whitman going right out wide close to pick up the inside it's go down the back straight into the bottom turn Whitman dives up the inside of Botel and he's past him there Botel goes up the bank in Hampshire in third place at the back it is Mullins but Chris Whitman keeping the Warriors hopes of getting something out of this match alive down the back straight into the bottom turn Whitman and is leading away still in second place there it is Botel has ridden very consistently other than that very unlucky fall winning second place but it's Whitman here who is doing the job and if it stays like this the Sprockets will certainly be taking something home but will it be a draw will it be a win we're gonna have to wait and see because Whitman is well clear here in the penultimate heat he's around that first and second turn down the back straight still Botel in second place third place there it is Hampshire we've lost Mullins at the back looks like he's retired from the race but no doubt about the winner Chrissy Whitman he picks up three points and we've just one race to go it's all or nothing for the Warriors 40 44 they trail and well the next 70 odd seconds are going to decide if it's a home draw possibly a home win of course they need a 5-0 to win it what a lineup we've got here for the final heat heat number 15 on the inside in the red helmet it is ben wilson his partner in blue he's nathan greaves in a white helmet will come into gate number two it is Daryl Richens and Zach Vachanek is in the yellow helmet. He's on the outside gate, gate number four. So here we go, starting Marshall calling him into line to get this one underway for the final time. Heat number 15, the green line is on. And away they go in the charge for the first turn. And it's Wilson and Greaves again who've gone in front. Wilson, it is in the... Red Helmet leading away, Greaves in second place, it's Ratchanek there in the third place at the back, it is Richings who was a faller last time out, to go around the bottom turn, Ben Wilson in front here, Greaves tucked in behind him in second place, Ratchanek chasing hard in third place, switching to the inside, trying to find a way up the inside of Greaves and shuts the door on him there, they go into the bottom turn, and if it stays like this it will be a draw. Can the teenage tear away, find a way through. He's getting up the inside of Greaves here, but Greaves again comes right across the front of him. Vachanek goes right out to the fence. He cuts back, trying to make that straight that little bit longer. He goes into the bottom turn. He can smell blood. He's going up the bank in here. He's going for it. He's going past Greaves. What a pass from the youngster. Wilson in front. Vachanek in second place. Greaves is back in third place. This will be enough. But Vachanek's not going for that. He's going for the victory. He's gone past Wilson. He's heading for the checkered flag. And three points. What a sensational race from the youngster. Zach Vachanek there. Last two first in dramatic style. He wins it. Second place goes to Ben Wilson. Third place there 
to Nathan Greaves, his first defeat of the night. But what about that for a race? And what about that for a score? The Isle of Wight have 43, and Swindon have 47. Wow, what a finish to the meeting here. Zach Bachinet coming round to the applause of the crowd, and rightly so. That was simply sensational from the youngster. Last to first to make sure his team go home victorious. It's finished here, the Isle of Wight 43. The Swindon Sprockets on 47. Let's give you the individual match scores. We start with the Sprockets. Zach Machinek there finished on 12 points. David Ballinger, 5 and 1 bonus. Dan Greenwood, 5 and 1 bonus. Alfie Botel, 7. Daryl Rich in 7. Lane Coopit, 4 paid 7. Taylor Hampshire, 7 paid 10. Let's then have a look at the Warriors. Ben Wilson, 12 and 1. Right. Tyler Gobi had failed to score. James Cockle scored 9. Chris Whitman, 6 and 3 bonus. Nathan Greaves, 13 and 1 bonus. James Seedy, 2. Ricky Mullins, 1. It's finished here at the Island. The Isle of Wight, 43. Swindon, 47. And congratulations to the visitors. Deserved winners on the night.